Welcome to the tutorial on R package net meta. Um, I'm Guido Schwarzer and I'm the maintainer of the package. Um, you will find the R script that I'm using here in this tutorial on Xenodo. Um, and there are two versions of um, the R package, the cran version and also a development version on GitHub where we publish bug fixes and newer features. I would like to start by having a brief look on the overview page um, of NetMeta. So it provides frequentist methods for network meta analysis and uh, also supports um, chapter eight of our um, book, Meta Analysis with R. Um, here is then a, a listing of uh, all the functions that are available in the package. Uh, I only would like to mention here that NetMeta uh, providing methods for frequentists uh, network meta analysis is based on uh, this paper by Gerta Rücker from 2012, which is uh, seen here. So published in the research synthesis methods. And what Gerta did there is um, she uh, has shown that uh, graph theoretical methods that are routinely used uh, for electrical networks that they also work well in network meta-analysis, that you can get consistent treatment effects, um, which are estimated via the more Penrose pseudo inverse of the Laplacian matrix. And uh, this leads to the usual uh, fixed effect or common effect uh, model estimates. Um, and what Geta also did here, she uh, discussed problems uh, of heterogeneity and consistency and provided a random effects uh, model and uh, described how to include multi-arm trials. There is another publication on NetMeta, um, which has just been accepted for the Journal of Statistical Software. So in this paper, we describe um, the workflow with NetMeta in more detail. And here I only would like to show you this diagram. Uh, so you would typically start by importing your own data set. Afterwards, you would calculate um, all pairwise comparisons using pairwise. And then you can conduct the main analysis using NetMeta. And afterwards, visualize uh, the results in forest plots, in network graphs, and also use some functions to rank um, the treatments. So, um, and this PDF file will be uh, a vignette for NetMeta, but it's not yet available at the moment. I will use in the following uh, an example that is available in NetMeta. It's an example of a network meta-analysis on antithrombotics to prevent strokes. The patients, uh, yeah, has have a non valvular atrial atrial fibrillation. Uh, there is a list of eight um, interventions uh, treatments that we are interested in, and the outcome of interest is the occurrence of of strokes. Here I load the data and have a look at two studies, and what we can see here is. Um, First of all, the the, uh, the the second study here is a two-arm study comparing VKAs. VKAs are vitamin K antagonists with uh, placebo. And the other study is a three-arm study, also comparing VKAs, but also to aspirin here. And this um, data format is somewhat typical. So we call it the, the long arm-based um, format. And what we can do now using pairwise is we can transform um, yeah, into the contrast-based format that is needed by the net meta function. And as we have here a binary outcome, we have to see what are the mandatory arguments for a binary outcome. And we have to provide uh, the argument treat with the information on the treatments um, and with the un uh, number of uh, observations for a treatment arm and event, so in this case here, the number of strokes. And those are all provided here in the first line. Uh, what we also have to provide are the study labels for a long arm-based format, because otherwise we would not know which rows belong to which study. 
So, okay. Um, now let's have a look here again at the same studies as before. And what we see now is, um, let's start with the uh, Bartov study here. We only have one row here for the, the two arm study. And we still have three rows for um, the, the three arm study. But what each of these rows contains is a pairwise comparison. So for the Bartov study, the pairwise comparison is a V case uh, against placebo. TE here is the log odds ratio. SETE is the standard error of the log odds ratio. And uh, for the, the three arm study, we have all uh, pairwise comparisons that are possible or available. And if we have a look here, for example, at studies with four, five, or six um, treatment arms, then the pairwise command would um, uh, generate six, 10, or 15 rows, uh, respectively, for such studies. Um, for some other analyses, uh, people uh, would not like to uh, extract or calculate all pairwise comparisons, but only comparisons uh, to a study-specific reference. This is often called the basic parameters. And you can do this here by, by the argument, keep all comparisons equals false. And then uh, we can also specify a reference. And here, the natural reference is placebo. If we run these commands here, then we will see that now we only have two rows for the first study. And these uh, two rows are always the comparisons um, to placebo. So what's missing here is the comparison VKAs against aspirin. Um, but in the following, we will not use um, this um, pairwise object, but we will use the other one with all pairwise comparisons. So in the next step, we will conduct the random effects Network meta-analysis. Um, first, let's here uh, define that uh, all yeah, treatment estimates and confidence intervals will be shown with two digits. And here is then the net meta command. The first argument is our pairwise object. And we use the other arguments to define that we do only consider the random effects model. So we say the common effects model equals false. Um, our reference is a placebo or control. And we already say here that um, for our outcome that small values are desirable. That means we would like to, to reduce the number of strokes um, with, with our treatments. And this information will be used for, for treatment rank, ranking later on. If we run this command, we get a warning stating that uh, there are that comparisons with, with missing um, treatment estimates or standard errors uh, will not be considered in our analysis. And here is also a message stating which study uh, does not uh, provide a treatment estimate. And if we look here at the data of this study, then we see that this is a study which had zero um, strokes in both groups. Accordingly, the odds ratio is not defined, and accordingly, this study will be excluded from the analysis. So now let's have a look at um, the results of our network meta-analysis. Um, the printout starts here with information on the number of included studies, pairwise comparisons, number of observations, number of treatments, and number of designs. Um, one design, for example, is aspirin compared to placebo. Another design is aspirin compared to VKAs compared to placebo and so on. So in total, there are 10 different designs. Then comes the result for the random effects model. And here, as we said before, we are interested in comparisons to placebo. And so we have here um, the odds ratios for all our active treatments compared to placebo. And what we see here overall is that the, um, the treatments reduce the odds for a stroke. Um, the largest effect is observed here for Darby Gatran 150 milligram 
Um, yes. Okay, then let's move on and have a look at a forest plot, which contains the same information basically, and is shown here. Um, later on, I will, will present another, um, a little bit more informative uh, forest plot, so I will not spend much time on this here. Um, but next, let's have a look here at network graphs. And the function for network graphs is the net graph function. And the standard network graph would look like this. Uh, so we, we see here all eight treatments in our network. And uh, the lines uh, correspond to uh, yeah, uh, where, where we have uh, direct comparisons. And uh, the thicker the line, the more studies compared um, the treatments directly. We have here uh, several crossings. So if we use here this SEQ argument, we can reduce or optimize the number of crossings. And here in the next step, we say, okay, let's, let's add also the number of studies that we have for each of these comparisons. And then we see, okay, there are eight studies comparing uh, vitamin K antagonists with aspirin and so on. And then here, the, the final, no, the, not the final, the, the second last um, command here would um, generate a network graph where we uh, indicate here by, by the size of these points, how many observations are available, uh, how many patients are available for the individual treatments and then in this last command here, so and we did this here with with these arguments, CEX points. This uh, yeah defines the the size of the points, and with the offset um, argument here, we we can specify that we would like to uh, add some space here between um, the treatment labels and the actual graph, and. This would be then uh, a plot that uh, already looks quite nice. Um, this offset argument uh, can be uh, tweaked um, more or less easily by uh, assigning the the, uh, net, the net graph uh, to a new R object here called TMP. So here we, we go back to the, the first um, yeah, network graph, but we could also do this with any of the other commands here. If we look here at the names of this new R object, we see it has information on nodes and edges. Nodes, nodes are here the, the treatments, edges are the comparisons that we have here. And then for, for the nodes, for the treatments, again, there is, is a list of um, variables that we, we can uh, have a look at, uh, at the current settings and also change them. And for uh, the distance between the treatment labels and the points that we have seen before, or, or here are these, these um, corners, uh, therefore we, we can or have to look at offset X and offset Y. So the distance uh, into the horizontal and the vertical direction. And by default, we can see here they are always the same. So what we could do, we could change here each value according to our needs. But here in these two commands, what I only do is in the first example here, I say, okay, add some space in the vertical direction. In the second command, I say add some space in the horizontal direction. And I do this here by uh, defining a matrix with uh, yeah, the offset in the horizontal and in the vertical direction. Let's have a look on what happens if we run these commands. So the first one adds here this, this space in the vertical direction. The second one would add it in the horizontal direction. So then let's move on to the next topic and that is ranking of treatments. And the first thing is what we will do is we look, we look at all uh, yeah, individual ranking probabilities. 
And what we are using here are resampling methods. Accordingly, I'm using here a seed in order to get reproducible results. And if I run here this command or this, this rankogram, then what I get is the probabilities that any of our eight um, treatments is the best treatment, the second best, and so on, or the worst. And we immediately see here that placebo is ranked here um, yeah, really at, as the, the worst in almost 97% uh, of the cases, and the rest is only um, yeah the seventh place. But placebo is never ranked here as the first or up to the sixth best uh, treatment. On the other side, uh, Wgatran, 150 milligram, <clears throat> is here clearly um, ranked uh, most often as the best of these eight treatments. Um, and okay, then the next thing we can do is we can then look at cum cumulative ranking probabilities. So we see or look whether what is the probability that a treatment is the best or the second best, the best or the second or the third best, and so on. And this can be done by using an argument uh, cumulative or cumulative uh, probabilities here. And if we do this, then we get uh, accordingly the cumulative ranking probabilities. We see here in the first um, column the same values, but the others are then just the, yeah, the sum of uh, these individual ranking probabilities here at top and so on. And what is clear here is, for example, that our best treatment um, is yeah, with a probability of 100% one of the first five best treatments. We can also plot these um, ranking probabilities. And here they are already um, ordered by the, the um, surface here under the curve. So here we already can see uh, the, the ranking basically of our treatments. So this is one is the best, and that one is the the worst of our um, treatments here. And a summary of these uh, curves is then the so-called surface under the the ranking curve, under the cumulative ranking curve, and we can get it uh, by um, using the net rank function and apply it here to our rankogram object. And then we get here these values and they can be interpreted as the average proportion that any of our treatments is better than, than all others. So this means here Wgatran 150 milligram is about 94% uh, on average, 94% of the cases better than any of the other interventions. And placebo here is yeah rather close to, to zero. Um, this is the Sucra. We, we could also do the same here, not with a rankogram object, but directly with our network meta-analysis object by specifying um, the method argument here. So this command here, if I run this, I get the same results, but here I would have to use the seed again. Okay, here, as you can see, these are just the same results. And here, the p scores, um, this, this is a ranking without resampling. Um, we get very similar results here to the Sucra values. Uh, yeah, which is also quite nice. And then finally, as promised uh, before, we can also have here um, a forest plot, which is sorted by decreasing sucra values. Sucras are added here in this on the right side of our plot. And we compare here the best treatment with, with the others. This is defined here in this with these two arguments. So let's look at the plot. And this would then, then be yeah, the, the final result here of, of these uh, treatment comparison or one possibility to, to summarize the result for, for the best treatment compared to the others, for example. 
And then finally, we can also produce a net leak, uh, a leak table using net leak. Uh, here, I will not run the command, but show you this Excel file, which I formatted a little bit. So uh, here in this in leak table, what we have is in the, the bottom, in the lower triangle, we have the network estimates. And in the upper triangle, we have the direct estimates. And that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention.